to me it was he was just a question of he was just love at first sight that's what it was to me all right but i was uh, you know i was like uh, you know watching how the whole process was playing out you know and and at the same time calculating the best strategy the the the, the, the best time you know to really really you know uh uh get hold of her and uh you know in a way that such that she she will not have the option of saying no or let me think about it will not be there okay this was all my strategy i was just doing all these calculations you know to get her to that point where hey once once you want to say it <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it, got, it got to a point. It got to a point where my my family was really worried about me. My sibling, my my mom, they were like, have you, I'm sorry, sorry. Have you been to her house? Uh, no, have you been to his house? And I said, yes. Did you see pictures of any girl? I didn't see any picture. Coincidentally, the only picture in his house was part of the passport he collected to look for admission for me into the university. He kept one for himself and put it, slotted it under his pillow. That was the only female picture I saw. So I told my sibling, they were like, hmm, but how bad boys are bad boys. When this guy will come for your pound of flesh or for his pound of flesh, I don't know how they put it anymore. He was going to. Every day. You know, my bestie here. Um, I was just carried away, excited to see my cousin, and so he said we should go. Um, we should go to. Um, I should go get the food. So I went, got the food, and I served them. <laughs> I got the food and I served them, and um, yeah, of course we just sat there, gisted, and um, um, after that, um, subsequently they came. Um, aside my cousin, my child, um, uh, let me say Mr. T, let me call him Mr. T. Aside Mr. T and my cousin, Colin, as I was called at that time, as he was called at that time, aside Mr. T and his friends coming, he started coming alone. And when he comes, you know, of course, um, each time he came around, I was the one that would go get his food and then serve him. So we became friends. And, um, because he was a known face in the family, right? My mom approached him one day. I was like, oh, Mr. T, uh, my daughter is around and she's looking for um, admission into school, all right? Into the university. Can you please, do you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can help? Imam can, Madu. Ima <laughs> There's not somebody that can help uh, you know, uh, get her admission. My husband jumped right into it like okay yeah um i can help you know you know like i can start the process right and so it was important of course you know somebody tried to help you have to go with the person so that was how you know hobby would take me on his own expenses honestly our uh, hobby would take me from one school to the other we'll go get admission form and then we'll go snap passport and then we'll go. so in the process of that, we became friends. We became very good friends. At the point, I had to open up to him because this was somebody who was really so kind to me, very nice to me, never, you know, there was, yeah, we were just good friends, just enjoying each other's company. And so I remembered that, um, I remembered that um, eventually, even when, uh, I have to say this, even when we didn't go to look for admission, Hobby will still come and pick me. And, you know, I guess Mopsy thought that we were still in the admission process, but we grew to just um, start, we grew to enjoy each other's company. We just started enjoying each other's company. I tell you what, it got to a point where a day without him kept me restless. I mean, I, it was that bad. And same also, like, each day, 
that goes by and this guy here does not set his eyes on me he will become really restless so we grew to become mm -hmm. so close and very good friends and eventually i got the admission i got the admission and when it was time to pay school fees and all of those you know harvey is an architect you know also a bachelor young man just got out of the um you know finished his master's also trying to navigate life and see what the future holds for him so he was struggling like every other young nigerian guy but you know the the little he had it was just sharing it with me like this was his babe i just could not understand that part and i didn't know that guy man had his eyes on me but he just didn't know how to um approach you know the situation at that time because um again i also want to put this out hobby um when eventually everything i'm jumping let me not jump okay calm down so um i remembered um when i got the admission right in fact one day my mom now called when he now paid school fees and in fact the point is he wanted to pay school fees. my mom was like no 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 i just wanted you to get her and help get her admission no no he said no mom it's okay it's okay you know it's okay you know all those it's okay it's okay kind of thing but anyways um so i remember one day my mom my siblings you know we just a lot we are quite close they were like Oh, this, this have you been to his house? I said yes, I've been to his house. Did you see a picture of any because they couldn't understand how this guy would be so nice to you and he has not told you anything. I want to be friends with you, I want to date you, I want to marry you, I want to what does he want from you? Why would he be doing all of this and then will not even alter a word? And so they were like, Did you see? Have you come across any female picture, any female um uh, photo? in his house i said no um i coincidentally um the only picture in his house was under his pillow the one of the passports <laughs> one of the passports the passports i gave to Oga at the top here to get me admission right he kept one for himself and I, he kept it under his pillow so i told him
never i didn't see a picture of you know so my mom was like no you need, this you need not... to be admitted into my heart first I need to... <laughs> so that was my own uh, on 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 the record on, on record on record you know passport yes yeah. <laughs> so why they were admitting me to the university you were busy admitting me into your heart <laughs> yeah but anyways um so um my mom was like no 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 i'm not comfortable with this like for tackled boys are bad boys for tackled boys are bad boys not when me. this guy will ask you for a pound of your flesh or when this guy will demand for the unthinkable or unimaginable i'm not comfortable with this and i'm like mom he's just a good friend like i guess you know i opened up to him he knew what i was going through at the time and um you know he just wanted to be there for me uh but again i also as a young lady let me not lie to you as a young lady i knew that we were more than i had i had i had another feeling you know and a feeling that i couldn't lay my hands on i knew that i really cared about him i really wanted him i really wanted more than friendship but again i am a woman and i mean if the opposite sex or the guy man is not forthcoming i don't think i am about to um reach out to him to say oh God, what do we want from here i have my own pride too <laughs> as a woman you know so i just couldn't i in fact i became anxious scared that i have this good friend that i've never had it i've never had seen such kindness and such care and i was scared that i was going to lose him perhaps one day he will show up and say you know what young lady you wanted help i have helped you it's time to go i have a lady now in my life honestly i was scared that one day he will and that would have really um that would have really i would have been really devastated because i was already really into him i should i boldly say i was in love with him i fell in love with him but I didn't know how to go about it. Yes, you also. were still standing. I was. <laughs> <laughs> you fell in love, but you were still standing. I fell in love, but yes, I stood with the gun. I stood with the gun as a moral young lady that was not going to just let go of her pride like that and start. No, I stood with the gun. Such hypocrisy, like, yeah. Such hypocrisy. <laughs> You're calling it hypocrisy, babe. I am calling it a good You fell, babe, but yet you were standing. A good girl that oh, the boy. should be proud of. That's yes, right. I was in love with I comforted myself. I That's love. Right. Yeah, hypocrisy. <laughs> Call it hypocrisy. Call it anything. I don't care. I don't care again. At this point, I don't care. There is nothing to hide anymore. But anyways, so mm. fast forward to the D-Day. Babe, I will leave you to take it from there. I've done my own part for now. Well, 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 well done on your part. And well done for standing strong. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah. So uh, for me, it was it was a matter of, it was like love at first sight. That was the situation. You know, but I was kind of, you know, trying to strategize and you know, getting the right moment to say what I wanted to say in a way that I will not misfire mm -hmm. or mis misunderstood, you know. So I was just playing all the nice guy stuff, okay, uh, so that things don't go wrong. Yeah. No, when, when you have, if you're looking for something and you find it, hmm, you will learn to protect that thing, to secure it. And that's what I was trying to do, you know, making sure that nothing went wrong until the D day, when it was a D day. Okay. So I, 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 I went to visit her as usual. You know, like she said, there was hardly any day that went by without us seeing each other. You know, it was almost impossible. You know, that day would just be like, like endless. You know, a lot of, a lot of, struggles you know any day we did not see each other so that day i had gone out to visit her and um, i said okay uh why don't we take a walk so we went out on a walk and uh 
to some type of a very quiet area of the estate where we lived. And uh, in those days, uh, you know, it's not like nowadays that there's so much insecurity, you know. Those days, nobody thought about anything, all these arm robbery, those things were just not there. You know, so we went there and it was like maybe around nine o'clock, nine thirty in the in the night, you know, nice. everywhere was that the moonlight was there. The moonlight, I could you know, never forget that. The that, moonlight that was moonlight. there. Moonlight, oh no. And uh so every, everywhere seemed uh, a little bright, you know, even though it was that late. And uh so we were just talking, talking, and then I had to open up to her because I so that the right moment was, it just, that was the right moment. And I just opened up to her and I poured out my heart to her, you know, like I expressed myself to her, how I was feeling and everything about her, you know, and, uh, you know, we just fell on each other and uh, we were just, we were just sobbing, you know, crying. Right. Why you know, they crying? I don't understand. We were, we were, we were all broken. Like, finally. It's like, it's like we won jackpot. You see what I'm saying? It's like we won jackpot. Like the moment that we both were looking for finally came. And uh, we just fell on each other's arms and we held each other so close. You know, and I mean, it was, I mean, it was a moment to, to remember, you know. <laughs> it was a moment, that moonlight, I see, I, I can still, up till now, that is one, one moment. It was so magical. I don't know how that moonlight, in fact, the moonlight made everything so, so perfect. It mm -hmm. made the timing, the moment so beautiful it was just natural it was like nature cooperating with us it was like nature giving its its, its consent right you know it was like nature backing us up backing right. a good thing up you know it was just like if I, every sign every sign pointed to the fact that um we were meant to be each other um we were meant for each other i'm sorry we were meant for each other we held ourselves we cried that crying part, I don't understand. But again, like obviously, it was emotional. It was, it was stuff, really you know. emotional. Yeah. Like we didn't know how to get. We knew that we wanted something. We knew there was a point we wanted to get to. But everyone was anxious. Holding was back. Yeah. Everybody, everybody was, was holding back. Was holding back. You know? He said he was <laughs> holding back because he didn't want me to look like he was taking advantage of my situation. Because, like I said. I had lost my dad, and to be honest with you, it was um, I didn't know how I was going to how we were going to go through school. Uh, my mom was left with virtually um, nothing to cater for eight children, so it was um, it was a, a, a challenging moment for me. So to have him come into my life and do all of those things, and again, um, according to him, he didn't want me to feel that he was doing it just to um, take an adv undue advantage of me, doing it for, for me to reciprocate with something. So he was looking for a better timing and that was really a good time. Like I was ready. I was ready. I was waiting for the time. It's, like I said, I was, you know. Yeah, I also had um, another thing that kind of helped me uh was uh i had i had some type of a uh, personal spiritual encounter you know that's you know it, it kind of helped help to consolidate like when i met her you know that came as like a confirmation okay and, and that's why everybody has to be very very sensitive because I believe in this life that God God talks to everybody. Mm. Yeah, even the people that you consider to be bad people, mm. criminals, this and that. God talks to everybody. You know, but if you're not sensitive, you you may you may miss it. And I, I'm so happy that uh, I, I recognized when it happened. And, um, you know, because uh, you can't go wrong with God anyways. You cannot. 
And uh, so, uh, 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 and that's one of the things that really uh, made the whole process very smooth. Mm, mm, you know, mm, uh, mm. Uh, as far as as far as you know, I was concerned. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's been actually twenty-seven years. Oh, twenty-seven years, right? Since we since met. We, since we met. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Twenty-seven years. All right. Twenty-seven years since we met. And uh, it just seems like yesterday. Seems like yesterday, yes. And and uh, our friendship, you know, over the years, uh, gets stronger and stronger. You know, uh, the love, the love I have for her now, is even way beyond what it was at the beginning. <laughs> Amen. To that. Amen. <laughs> That the love has not <laughs> so, decreased. So it did not depreciate. The part of the justice as a shining you know, light that shined from, you know, yeah. shining, that shined brighter value. and brighter and brighter. So, yeah. yes. And so, she's, look, she's looking more beautiful now. She's looking more beautiful oh. now. Did you hear that? I'm blushing. Yes. <laughs> After five soldiers. They say I still look beautiful. God, I give you all the glory. Yeah. I take that as a compliment. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're a gift to me. Oh, thank you. You are a gift to me too. Yes. And right. let me tell you the truth. Like all through the journey, um, every marriage has its own. And we'll get into that. I don't want to make this um those I don't want to take I don't want to add to this story. I just want this story to stand on its own, our love story to stand on its own. But again, well, hobby is such a busy bee, you know, it, it, it gets, is is always a hurdle to get him to sit down. But um, I trust God that, you know, we'll be able to do this. We are, in fact, we are going to be doing this often because people ask us a lot of questions. We get a lot of mails. We get a lot of DMs. People asking us, how did you people... You act like you met yesterday because they always say, oh, those that met, you know, they used to humorously say, oh, it's love that is shocking them because they just got married. You know, I'm sure you've heard that a yeah. lot. Love is shocking them now because they just got married. Wait until they are new in the years. Yeah, they are Wait new until the, five yeah. years, six years, seven years, the love will just uh, fade you know. away. Yeah. But again, it's a lie. You know, it's a lie. You can grow and grow more instead of decreasing you can increase in love and so we are going to be sharing some of our journey how we've been able to navigate through this institution they call marriage is full of ups and downs but um in all of it you know um that god centered and every other thing friendship and transparency and honesty all of those we are going to touch on that and we are going to open up to you people you know some of our hurdles and challenges we waited for five years before exactly i don't want to add to this story but anyways babe like you always say it's nice doing business nice with you. doing business with you <laughs> it's mm -hmm. nice doing business marriage business with you too. yeah god has been faithful we are couples helped by god greatly 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 helped by god and until next time this is Kate and Chris, and this is the Igodo family vlogs. A very good time, a very good time to share. If you are looking for couples that you want to listen to, you want to hear realness from them, we keep it real, okay? You want to, want to just come and laugh, you want to come and have fun, you want to come and be encouraged, you want us to pray together, please reach out to us, reach out to us, reach out to us. We are your sister, we are your brother. Reach out to us and we can always grow together. We love you guys and take care and bye. Bye. -bye. Every day.